What's up, guys? Paul here from Hashtag Sports. Just dropping a real quick note on some things as far as training camp that I think are always kind of important to remember because while the media is being restricted and, you know, you're not allowed to say a lot of stuff and, and we've seen some, some things coming out of One Bill's Drive that get kind of, uh, you know, you hesitate. I always want you to be careful of those typical things to avoid paying attention to those easy traps to fall into when it comes to training camp. Let's walk through a few of them and really kind of uh, read through the lines of what they really mean. I want to take us back to a few seasons ago when we heard Cam Lewis was lighting up training camp and everybody got excited, a real tall player. Uh, you know, the Bills were struggling for height at the wide receiver group at that time. And that went a whole lot of nowhere. Cam Phillips actually went to play, uh, I believe, to play in the AAF. Uh, it was among one of the better players in the AAF, performed great, right? But from an NFL career, eh, then nothing really happened. I want to warn you against buying into wide receiver hype early in training camp. And here's why, right? The kids that study hard are always going to excel early. And you could easily say that about Gabe Davis and Isaiah Hodges. These kids, when you talk about drafting character, they drafted character. Not only that, but catching the football becomes second nature to them, right? And and they are they are football players. So really reading and understanding the route concepts, that's the hard part for them when moving up from the college level to the professional level. Now, we all see highlight reel catches. We saw the same thing with Duke Williams, right? We saw that last year. We're seeing highlight reel catches all over the place. And we're starting to see that. With uh, I saw one, uh, Isaiah Hodges over uh, Cam Lewis. Uh, the Bills posted on their Twitter account the other day. Uh, you've seen a bunch from, from Gabe Davis. And while they are things to get excited about, I do want you to remember a couple things. One is we are still looking at very, very simple designs that they're asking these guys to run right now. These things evolve over the course of the season. That's where a lot of times where a lot of rookie receivers get left in the dust. They may start out really hot in the beginning of training camp while they're working concepts that are simple and similar to what they might have run in college. But as that progresses, you're going to see a lot of rookies kind of fall out of favor there and the veterans start to step up because now you're starting to get into things that the veterans are a bit more comfortable with, whereas the rookies have never done before. Things like you know, route adjustments, read routes, um, you know, th there's a lot of things that they're asked to do at an NFL level that they never had to in college. So while I want you to be excited about Gabe Davis specifically, and believe me, there's a lot to be excited about, huge fan of Gabriel Davis, huge fan. Um, I want you to watch out for the Cam Phillips, Duke Williams effect, right? And we saw Duke Williams against Houston, and I will be very honest with you. Going back and watching that game, it was very clear Houston's defensive matchup was just let Duke Williams try and catch the football. Just We're going to take everything else away. Let Duke Williams beat us, right? And Gabriel Davis and Duke Williams, now that's an interesting conversation. If you've seen the episode that we released the other day talking about practice squad eligibility and how the Bills can manage their roster, Duke Williams might be a player that sticks around for a while. Uh, Gabe Davis, I think, has, uh, first off, I think he was a steal. So let me just say that. Um, but I think he's probably likely going to make this roster. Even as deep as they are at wide receiver, you kind of think he's going to make the roster. Uh, because I, I really don't know if he would be able to clear waivers to make it to a practice squad. Uh, and that's sort of the product of, you know, a solid player who the Bills are promoting doing well. And the media, and this is where I kind of get this, right? The media doesn't have a lot to report on right now. They're not allowed to talk about formations or personnel groupings, uh, which is what got Chris Brown in trouble. Chris Brown was talking about personnel groupings, and, and that's a big no-no. And some of you may not know this, but when, uh, as a media member, and I was lucky enough to get on the sidelines because of our friends Ryan Lacell, Icy, Icy Vic over at Rock Sports Network, I got to do that with, uh, with Drew Gear, Mario, um, you know, it was a really, really awesome experience to be able to be on the sidelines and talk to some of these players during the course of, uh, of training camp. But what happens is something very different than what you, want, than what you might think. 
not only can you not talk about personnel groupings because that's a big lockdown there's parts of practice that you're not allowed to film right um you're not allowed to take pictures in because they're specific they're team specific they're not drills they're not warm-ups they're 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 things that they want hidden from the rest of the league as much as possible right and this season is very different because there's no fans at training camp. So now they have the opportunity to really lock down everything that's going out in the media. And unfortunately, Chris Brown said some things that got himself in trouble because the Bills do not want anybody knowing what they're doing. And if you want proof of that, just go ahead and look at their Twitter feed, right? What are we seeing? We're seeing highlight catches of Gabriel Davis. We saw a highlight catch of Isaiah Hodges. We saw uh, a screen pass to Devin Singletary. No surprise there. Uh, we saw a uh, a rollout right, beautiful rollout right pass by by Josh Allen, a rollout left pass to Josh Allen to John Brown, right? And uh, I'm pretty sure that's, that's about the stretch of it. Oh, a bunch of dancing. The guys are dancing a lot on their Twitter feed. But they're not giving you anything that you wouldn't already expect, right? Uh, Tyler Mankiewicz was uh, mic'd up. That was a bit of a surprise. But again, he's a player that I think they really do look at Tyler Mankiewicz as locking in that Lorenzo Alexander special teams role. So they're not giving anything out on their social media accounts that uh, is any news, right? Talking about how good the rookies are doing, that's not telling any team anything. It's not. It's not telling them anything. Um so the way that the Bills are handling not only their social media accounts, but the, the opportunity they have to lock down their practices so that nobody could see them and the media is kind of frozen out from being able to talk about a lot of things kind of leads you into a lot of these analogies, right? Like, oh, Josh Allen is really throwing guys open. You know, um, oh, you know, uh, Allen looked sharp, connected on 16 of 20 passes. Okay, what kind of pass rush was he going against? Right? Was he going against a legitimate pass rush, or were we talking about this was seven on seven? Right? What? Wh how? How legitimate are we really looking at when we talk about these analogies that we're seeing out of the media? Because again, they can't tell us anything. You know, they don't want to get their access revoked, um, and we, the coaching staff is not is the coaching staff is not immune to that. I saw Sean McDermott losing on Matthew Fairburn over something that was incredibly minuscule, uh, but it was something they didn't want leaked. And that's kind of what happens, right? A lot of times players build relationships with reporters, and that's how information kind of leaks out. Now, the reason you're not seeing a lot of those reports is players can't get to the reporters. The reporters can't get to the players to kind of farm out a lot of that information. The reporters really do leverage a lot of relationship building to try and get information out of players. And this year, they're not allowed to really even get close enough to them to get that level of information. I just want to use a great example. It was right before the season. Trey White went on one Bills drive and took questions from the media. And it was prior to opt-out date. And he said, I'm not sure if I want to I want to play. Which was not, these comments were not unlike Micah Hyde, right? Where he said, listen, I, I don't know if I want to play. If I have to be removed from my family the whole year, I don't think I want to do that. But at the same token, I don't know if I can risk my family playing if, if some if I'm going to get sick playing this game, I'm going to get my family sick. I don't know if I want to do that. Well, holy hell, did the media circus just explode when those two players said, I'm thinking about not playing. And the reason it exploded was because if you asked almost any of those players, a lot of the veterans probably would have had a similar stance saying, listen, I just don't know. I have to make sure that, you know, are we are we going to be in a bubble? Are we not going to be a bubble? Am I going to be able to see my family during quarantine? Am I not? And they didn't have the answers at the time. So any veteran player would have responded that way. But because these reporters are so locked off from their typical interactions with the players, literally any scrap of information that they can hold on to is really going to get blown out of proportion, right? So I want you to just keep focused on what we know, right? We know Josh Allen's the quarterback of this team. We know Devin Singletary's RB1. We know that Diggs, Brown, and Beasley are your RBs 1, 2, and 3. We know your offensive line, minus Feliciano's injury. There's still a little bit of debate as far as who's going to take that guard spot, right? That's a story, is who's got that guard spot. Everything else on the offense is kind of set and locked in, and the defense is really no different, right? 
So don't buy into the Josh Allen is struggling. Josh Allen should be struggling. He's going against one of the best defenses in the NFL. He should be struggling. But also remember that the offensive concepts that they're running right now are, are almost remedial at this point. They're not running their in-season game plans. So it's going to be a lot of man coverage, which the wide receivers can beat man coverage. That's kind of the idea. Wide receivers in zone coverage, young wide receivers get eaten up by zone because they don't know how to read it, right? So that's why early in practices, and in, in the early practices, you'll see those young wide receivers do really well because it's a lot of man coverage while they're working on their reads in the defense and while the offense is walking through. But as soon as we start seeing more zone concepts, more pass-off concepts, more read routes from the wide receivers, and as that responsibility excels, you're going to see those wide receivers become less and less of a story unless they make highlight reel catches. And Gabe Davis seems to be... Uh, you know, it seems to be somebody who can do that for you. And Duke Williams obviously did that all last season, right? But go back and watch those highlight reel catches. And what do you see? Man-to-man coverage, right? I'm telling you guys, there's a lot to be excited about the Buffalo Bills. And there's a lot to be excited about young players. Just don't buy into all the hype right now. Because for 2020, you're getting way less story than you did in 2019 because the reporters just don't have the access to the players. This is Paul from Hashtag. Have a good one.